in the mother effing hizzy. How do I look? I think you look like the perfect combination of Peter Pan and a figure skater. Yeah, keep talking that Bantha shit, Comair Alexa. But you ain't gonna be so tough looking down the barrel of my lightsaber, huh? Can we just practice our lines before I rest over here? And how come your droid looks just like me? It's creeping me out. Yeah, well, if you read the dang script, you'd find out that that is actually CMA-22, and I built her as a child on my home planet of Planet Stasiak. I am fluent in over eight forms of communication. Yeah, so there's only a limited amount of languages I could uh, program her with using my uh, Alexa. OMG! Aren't I the cutest Sith you have ever seen? Wait, why the frick is Diva Marie on the dark side with me? Duh! Because the red lightsaber totally goes with my outfit. All red everything, baby! As a bounty hunter, she is going to be my first target to kill. What? No, Robo Tamita, not at all. If you read the script, in the movie, our goal is to find Comer Alexa, put her in some hot water, maybe lava, do a head swap, thus returning her to her original body, maybe bringing the good out in her. But I want to kill. Alright, well if that's the case, I'll write in the script that you killed Darth Pinta. Uh, Darth Pinta, any objections? Didn't think so. Yeah, ladies, I'm gonna have to record some voiceovers for him for the movie. Well, since I have this red lightsaber thingy, I'm off to get revenge on that skank of a boyfriend, Ken, for cheating on me with Barbie. Do oh God! to Lumberjillvo. Women's wrestling lives here. Now today we are doing something completely different compared to what I usually do on the channel and we are going to review a non-wrestling figure. Now there's a great reason for this. The most important reason is this is the Star Wars Black Series Koska Reeves. I've also seen it pronounced Koska. Don't kill me in the comments. I'm not sure the correct pronunciation but for the sake of the review I'm going to say Koska. Now on The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 3 she was portrayed by Mercedes Vernado. Now, that is Sasha Banks in the WWE. And you can't really see beside me. I guess you can. But I am a Sasha Banks figure completionist. A huge fan of hers. And I, I just think the sky's the limit as far as her career goes in the ring, out of the ring. And the fact that they made this figure, I am ecstatic for. And like I mentioned in the intro, I have a list of women's wrestling figure pre-orders that's just sitting there right now. With nothing shipping. And I haven't had a new figure since Basic 121 Bailey. So I figured why not try to hunt this down, track it down, and do a review. So I did get this for an excellent price from Mercari. Shout out to the seller. And I'm really excited to open it up, take a closer look, and most importantly, see how the likeness is in her face to the real life Mercedes Vernado. So without further ado, let's dive in. So truth being told, this is not my very first Star Wars Black Series figure. I also got a Kylo Ren in the past and a Jar Jar Binks. Please do not judge me. <laughs> but either way, I really do enjoy this series. I just haven't really gotten to collecting it. And if I did down the road, I would definitely hunt down Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels characters because I really enjoyed those shows. And I think this is a fantastic series. Even though I haven't really gotten into it, I think it's excellent. And I really enjoy seeing these on the pegs at stores. And that leads me into the packaging, which is what we'll talk about first. And the Star Wars Black Series packaging is just class. I mean, it really is. As you can see, this figure looks great mint on card. However, the helmet does come off, and me being a Sasha Banks figure collector, and the fact that Mattel took so long to get her resemblance down, I'm really interested to see how the face resemblance comes about on this figure. 
But either way, this box has excellent artwork on the side and also on the back, also an extensive bio. And as you can see on the front, we have a clear window with a little bit of it wrapping around the side and then down through the top. Now, like I mentioned, if you're an MOC collector, this does look great, but the fact that the helmet comes off, I want to see what it looks like. And I think most people that get this do. So with that being said, let's open her up and take a closer look. Star Wars Black Series, Costco Reeves. Costco was played by Mercedes Kastner Vernado, a.k.a. Sasha Banks in the WWE. And she first appeared in The Mandalorian in the second season on the third episode titled Chapter 11, The Heiress. Alright, so we are going to do things out of order because I really want to see this face scan. And truth being told, I haven't taken the helmet off, I haven't peeked. So when I take this off, my first look is also y'all's first look. So I'm really excited to see if they nailed her look. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's remove this helmet. Okay. It looks okay. It looks pretty good. So right away you can see that the hair detail is outstanding. So she has these braids that go in all different angles, super accurate to how it was on the show. Now as far as her face goes, I think it leaves a little to be desired. I don't think it's the best scan in the world. I don't know what kind of technology they have for the Black Series figures, but it definitely could be better. It's one of these scans that I'm going to have to sit back and take a look at it and let it sit to see how I feel about it because it's not horrible, to be honest with you. Let's just take a closer look here. So I don't know if it's the eyes or what, but the skin looks a little off. But like I said, not bad. Now, I'm going to put her over here, and to the right here, I'm going to put an image of her Elite Series 83, just so you can kind of compare looks. So I'm going to be honest with you, the more that I look at this figure, the more that that skin's growing on me, and I actually really like it. But let's move on to her accessories. So to start off, you kind of got to look at it before when we took it off, but this is her helmet. Now what's cool is it has a little battle damage on there. And also this rangefinder can move in all different directions, even in front of her eye. It can go up and all around. Now I really do like that blue color, and what I like most about this helmet, as you saw before, is it comes off pretty easily, and it fits on her nice and snug. A lot of times when a helmet's removable, more often than not it looks way big and way out of scale, but this one looks excellent on her or off her. She also comes with this jetpack here, which is a grayish silver color with blue accents, and it plugs right into her back. And she also comes with dual blasters, which fit in her hands nicely. So I'm a big fan of the accessories, and I've said this before with Ultimates or Elites with wrestling figures. It drives me nuts when there's a bunch of extra accessories, but what I like about this figure is everything she comes with, you can put on her all together, all at once, and even if you don't have the helmet on her, she could be holding it. So with that being said, let's move on to her attire. So the attention to detail on her armor or her attire is freaking tremendous i'm sure this is the case with most black series figures but like i said i have a pretty small sample size but i'm blown away i mean as you can see she has that classic blue armor pieces all around which is very accurate to the show but what's cool is the addition of battle damage on the front of her chest plate here also on her little shoulder plates and her gauntlets she also has this brown waist belt type thing along with a holster which actually a gun goes right into so let me put that blaster in there to show you so that is freaking awesome. Moving down she has these little I guess knee pad type things and then she has these blue guards on her boots. Now underneath that armor she does have a molded frame which kind of simulates the baggy type clothes that she wore underneath her armor plates so yeah I'm, I'm blown away by how detailed this armor looks in this attire like this looks freaking awesome now let's cover articulation because that is also something new to me with this line of figures now it's time to cover that articulation though now first things first is her head is on this ball joint but holy smokes look at all this movement I haven't seen movement in head articulation in a woman's figure in a long time. Most of the women's wrestling figures are limited by the hair or just the design. 
But this hair mold, along with the design of the neck, I mean, she can go all over the place. This is freaking great. Now, the arms are on a ball-type joint, but what I like about these joints is they're almost on like a ratchet. So it kind of clicks into place to avoid it getting loose, which is great. Now, let's see. Does she have an upper arm swivel? I don't believe so. Now, she does have elbow flexion. It's not double-jointed. And with her hand, she can swivel her hand here. And then, let's see, also on her right hand, which is a little different, she has a little joint where she can kind of go up and go down. So she can radial deviate and ulnar deviate, if you want the professional term there. And then, as far as her torso goes, right up underneath that armor piece, she can swivel a little bit and spin. Her waist, I believe, doesn't turn. And then on her hips, she has all range of motion in that hip. And also, she has a joint in her upper thigh to allow some swivel. Now her knee is a hinge joint that can go back pretty darn far. And as far as her foot goes, it can go down, can go up, and it can also swivel side to side. So yeah, that was definitely a new course in articulation that I'm not used to, but I'm impressed. And I really like how firm these joints are. And here's one last look, the Star Wars Black Series, Casca Reeves. Wow, so I'll be honest, this figure freaking blew me away and I love it. And this made me so itchy to get more Star Wars Black Series figures, and I will. But don't worry, this channel is always going to be where women's wrestling figures live, so that's going to be the continued theme, but it was cool to do something a little different. Now with that being said, I give the Star Wars Black Series Costco Reeves an overall score of a 9.5 out of 10. This figure's great. It is so excellent. The accessories she comes with are good, the attention to detail is spot on, and the likeness is pretty good. Like I said, it's kind of up for interpretation. I think the likeness is good, but not perfect. And that's something that we saw in Mattel, where it took them so long to get a scan that was pretty decent, and I still think they haven't nailed her scan completely. But this is Hasbro's first attempt, and I think it actually looks like Mercedes or Sasha pretty darn well. Is it perfect? No, and that's why it gets 0.5 off. But either way, I think this figure rules. And also, it's important to note that if they have the same scanning type technology that Mattel has, maybe my scan's on a little off, and that's why it might not look spot on. So that's why I kind of leave it up in the air, and I'm not docking too much off. But like I said, overall, this is an excellent figure. I love it. Highly recommend for any Star Wars fan and any Sasha Banks fan. Thanks for stopping by Lumber Joeville. Women's wrestling lives here. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, and join the community. There are tons of future women's wrestling figure reviews coming up, including Basic Series 122, Chelsea Green and Charlotte Flair, Elite 87, Asuka and Candice LeRae, and also Unrivaled Series 6, Sheeta. Also, make sure to check out Lumber Joe Cast, where you can hear the treasure and I talk on a weekly basis wherever you listen to podcasts. May the force be with y'all. Thank you.